Jeff, where were you 20 years ago today? I was still at junior school, I'm sure. Ago, 87, I was watching the FA Cup final at Wembley, um, Coventry City and Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur. Hotspur. Plenty of goals, own goals, but more importantly, a goal by a local lad. I think it's one of the best goals in FA Cup, apart from Steven Gerrard, of course. Well, uh, no, we, we've Borough's never scored in an FA Cup final, yeah, well. so I can't. I haven't really got anything to come back with. Yeah, a, a superb diving header. Well, let's I just remember. talk to him, shall we? Let's. Mr. Keith Houchin, how are you, Keith? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, uh, nice to listen to you both talking about my goal. I never get tired of listening about my goal. Very good. Do you, want, do you want to hear about the goal? Yeah, a few nights in La Manga or Wembley, yeah. there was no, no, but no, I was there that day. It was, in yeah. fairness, it was one of the better cup finals. Oh, it was a classic. No, doubt, yeah. Until yeah. last year, I mean, last year was superb, but yeah. usually cup finals aren't a lot to write home about, but that no. was absolutely superb, that one. Yeah, well, I can't comment on last year. I didn't see last year's actually, because I was actually in Spain myself doing a bit of golf, but... Um, <laughs> Very nice for some. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I mean, having played in it, I thought it was a particularly exciting cup final because both teams went for it and tried to win it right from the off. And I think what, what happened after that for quite a number of years was teams were going into cup finals and not actually trying to win them. I think they were more, more intent on, on actually not losing them. Mm. And I think that may, has a big bearing on how the game's played, doesn't it? I think in those days, though, you obviously had the, the second bite of a replay. Now, nowadays, yeah. there's no replay, it's extra time and penalties, and I don't know at times whether that encourages teams to go yeah, for it, it or, does, or, it? or on some occasions, yeah. you know, what worries me um, for, for today is that Chelsea may do what Chelsea exactly. do and be quite happy to just nick it 1-0. Well, it's European football, isn't it? Yeah. And of course, we have that many European footballers in England anyway that it's starting to be played as, European, as a European competition, and like you say, they do tend to sit behind the ball, make it very boring and get down, right down to penalties, which is not the best way to play it, is it, really? No, to me, obviously, I was only two or three. Oh, no, no, I was God. I, was, I, was, I that, think yeah. I was nine, anyway. And to me, it was, it was the first cup final to me that really sort of grabbed... And yes, I was nine, yeah. I'm just working out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it was one of them them days. It was it was it was blazing hot I mean, in my mind. Anyway, it was blazing hot sunshine. It was mm -hmm. this, what the this kind of small team against Tottenham, who were the cup team and are still yeah. a cup team, I suppose. But it, it just seemed yeah. to have everything. That in the end, Jimmy Hill singing as well, <laughs> which was too much for me. There, there was definitely a carnival, a carnival atmosphere. I mean, cup finals. I was a bit like Jeff when I first turned pro at Hartlepool in '77. I used to go down to every cup final. I was fascinated by FA Cup finals. That was like the big dream for me to, to get into because you couldn't get to play at Wembley in the old days unless you you played for England or played in the cup final that was it and uh, I was fascinated by all of that I went I remember going and watching the Ipswich Arsenal was the first one I went to I actually slept in the car on the M1 to go and watch that and then I saw uh, the Manchester United Arsenal yep. game and the Man City Spurs game and the QPR game so I was totally, absolutely fascinated by cup finals and like I said the carnival, carnival atmosphere as much as anything because the, the build up uh, when you're in and around Wembley in the old days the, the atmosphere was fantastic well, well even and if you were at home sort of cup final you, get it, you used to you, start yeah. about 11 o'clock in the morning well, yeah, yeah, 9 o'clock yeah. yeah. you watch, watch them having breakfast I mean yeah, in, yeah, in those days yeah. I don't know about you Keith but the, the FA Cup like you're saying to me it's always been so so special it was a holy and, grail really, and you know in it? recent years we've we've had the situation where clubs playing under strength teams yeah. right the way through yeah. the competition yeah. FA Cup third round day where there's sort of 20 odd thousand in a 40 50 thousand yeah, stadium yeah, I and I, I just don't think the Cups cut, lost the magic I love it and mm. and you know when you've got the I mean obviously today's game Chelsea versus Man United is the one all the experts wanted it's the one they wanted yeah but you know when Southampton got there when Sunderland got yeah, there when exactly. when yourselves got there Wimbledon yeah. that was the magic of the FA Cup that Without a small all team on the big day, anything could happen, and it's yeah. become like the Premiership, just a little bit predictable now. More, well, more and more difficult. Well, that was always going to happen. I think the Premier League was always good. when they set the Premier League up. I could see exactly where it was going. It was all about the big boys taking everything, literally playing in everything and having everything. And um, you know, the, the FA Cup has really suffered because of that. I mean, beggars belief with me, really, when managers in the Premier League play a week in teams in the FA Cup just to make sure they don't finish fourth they can finish fourth bottom in the Premier League yeah. or something like that and I think that does take some away from it but I think with players certainly with British based players British born players and with the general public really I mean the FA Cup is the magical trophy isn't it that's the real you know the real special yeah. one and obviously the old Wembley had this incredible history about it it used to and you say you used to go to the finals, Jeff. I mean, 
you'd walk in there and you could smell the history of the place, couldn't you? Yeah, I mean, having, 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 said, toilets, wasn't having, having said that, I was just going to say, it, <laughs> Dave's brought in the subject, that was the toilets, but <laughs> having said that, the place itself, oh, yes, the place, I mean, it was you terrible. Know. You know, the dressing rooms were archaic, weren't they? Yeah, but they? there was just something about them. Something I mean, about I'd it, never, yeah. I, I didn't get to go. The lads all went for a couple of times before the final to get the feel of the place. You'd go in and train on the pitch and get yeah. a feel of it. I never, I'd never been. I was actually ill in the build-ups, right? The first time I walked in was when the bus pulled in through the big gate God. and they slammed shut behind us. And I, I mean, there were huge cavernous dressing rooms. And the way it's all laid out in the cup final day was just beautiful. You have like, you've got like a butler running around getting mm. you whatever you want and that sort of thing, you know. That's the referee, and, wasn't uh, it? <laughs> the, the ref was Neil Midgley, actually. The ref, uh, I used to get on really well with Neil Midgley. He was a really one of the good old, yeah. old, you know, one of the refs from the old school. He actually did my benefits uh, dinner for me, uh, Neil. Um, but no, and, I, and I, I was always fascinated by the history of the game and that anyway. So to be playing there and being a part of it was just incredible for me. And that's what gets me now, what blows me away a little bit. 20 years later, I'm now a part of the history of the old Wembley, which is just a fantastic mm. feeling, really. Mm. I'm very proud of that. Right, well, we've got to pay the bills now. We're back with more from Keith in a moment. TFM's Soccer Saturday. If we took corners, we'd all... TFM Soccer Saturday here on TFM. This is Soccer Saturday. I'm David Eason, and we're talking to uh, Keith Houchin, ex of Hartlepool, of course, ex Hartlepool manager as well. And uh, 20 years ago today, Cup Final Day, 1987, he scored that diving header in that FA Cup Final. 1987, Coventry City winning the Cup. And uh, Keith, just take us through that day, because it was fantastic, wasn't it? It was everything that I expected it to be. I mean, you know, I, I'd done the Wembley Walk. You know, I remember the first time that I went when I was going at 77, 78. Uh, I nearly got arrested, actually, because I was leaning over the top. I wanted to see the bus come in and stuff, and I was just fascinated by, the, you know, the players with the suits and everything. And so that all came back to me as I'm driving down Wembley Way. I'd remembered five or six years before nearly getting arrested by a policeman for leaning over the parapet and that, you know. <laughs> And then, you know, just just taking everything in, just we pulled, like I say, we pulled in, we slammed the big gates, and you're, then you're inside Wembley. And we weren't actually allowed, we went up with the suits. Again, that used to fascinate me, watching the players with the suits on, going up and having to walk around Wembley as it slowly filled up and stuff, you know. But we weren't allowed to, um, to warm up on the pitch that day. We had to warm up in the tunnel, literally in the tunnel. So the first time I, I really got a real feel is obviously as we walked up through the tunnel and, and then you break and obviously like you said it was a really hot sunny day yeah. and just that noise and colour and everything it just lifts you off your feet it's Fantastic. the most amazing experience I couldn't possibly even try to describe it to anybody. Did, did you get the same sort of advice that we got, Keith? In what the, was that? Well, you know. The, the normal build-up to a Saturday, we we've, we all had a pre-match routine and yeah. the match itself and everything. Course, but people yeah. said that with an FA Cup final, savour every second of it yeah. because the whole day just goes so quickly. Exactly, yeah. And it becomes... You all, you're arriving there, you know, at Wembley yeah. at whatever time, 11 or 12, 1 o'clock, and the next thing you know, you're on the coach or you're, you're in yeah. the car leaving, and the whole day, there's a million and one memories, but it just goes by in a flash. You, you do hear that a lot, Jeff, don't you? And uh, obviously that we'd got that same thing, but um, like you say, I was determined to remember every detail of that day. And uh, I can, you know, I can remember everything about that, that day, that gate of the game itself, everything about, I can even remember, I mean, we had to, after the game, you go right up into the rafters to do your interviews at the yeah. old Wembley, and we were up there for hours and hours, I mean, and I can always remember turning around and looking through the big plate glass windows, looking down onto the pitch. The stadium was totally deserted, and there was just all the wrappers and everything blowing backwards and forwards across the pitch and that, you know, and... Uh, that was the one time when I kind of blinked and shook my head and kind of thought to myself, you know, has that, has that really just happened? Have we won it? Have I just scored? Have we got the FA Cup here? You know, it was months and months, even years, before I sat down and, and really tried to put my head around uh, right. doing what I'd done personally. Because it happened, you know, I'd, I'd shuffled around. I'd been desperately trying to get to play at that level, don't forget. I was 26 by the time I got there. And uh, I think if I'd have tried to take it all in then, I don't think I'd have been able to, to be mm. honest. But we, like I say, we took hours. We never got to see the families or wives or anything. We had to go all the way back to Rugby outside of Coventry right. before we met. And obviously they were, we were in a hotel and they were all waiting on the steps. And that was a great big party and that that we had that went on all night. I mean, literally all night. I think we ran out of champagne about five o'clock in the morning. And then it was literally up at eight and on the open top bus around the city. And I mean, at the time, I'd scored a goal. I've scored lots of goals like that over the years. But, you know, I've often said to people, the fact that the, the goal itself has become so iconic, I think yeah. it's because you do it on that kind of stage in yes. that kind of atmosphere. But it, it, it was an amazing goal. I mean, just, just take us through it, because it, it, it is one of the great Wembley goals, isn't it? 
I think, yeah, but I think because of the fact that it's an unusual goal, in the, 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 the literally had to dive a long yeah. way to get there to make sure I got a connection on it. The ball itself was a, was a, just a wonderful ball. It was a type of ball they play now for fun with the new balls that they've got. But used to, if you bent the ball in our days, it was either an accident or you were very, very skillful. And uh, Dave Bennett just bent an incredible ball in, didn't he, between the goalkeeper and the uh, back four. And the only way I could get on, get on the end of it was to throw myself at it and uh, get a good connection on it and make sure I hit the target. Um, which, like I say, I've done lots of times, but when you're doing it at Rochdale away on a cold January night in front of 2,000, <laughs> doesn't, uh, doesn't follow you for 20 years, you know what I mean? In my own mind, I can still see the same sorts of goals in different places. Do you still see it in slow motion? I can see it, yeah. That, I mean, that, that one I can actually, yeah. I mean, you, you know when you talk about the magic of the FA Cup and, and how brilliant it is, yeah. were you still at Coventry uh, against Sutton United a couple of years later? Thanks for bringing that up. That was the next... <laughs> that was the next that, you, you were the holders, weren't you, that year, was that? No, we, uh, was we went out the year after to Watford, actually. Went yeah. out 1-0 to Watford. That was about that was the second year after we'd, after we'd obviously won the Cup. And I mean, I've seen both sides, Jeff. I've, you know, I was at York in 84 when we knocked Arsenal out uh, mm. on a frozen, wintry, frozen pitch. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Um, and, you know, and they just didn't fancy it that day. And, I, I mean, I could... S- I could half see it coming when we played Sutton. I mean, not that we were... Ne- I mean, the lads in that Coventry side had all seen both sides. You know, they'd all played low leagues and higher up. It wasn't as if they were all big-time Charlies or anything like that. But you could see it coming that day. It was a really tight little ground, uh, difficult to play football on, rough pitch, yeah. big crowd in. The tr- dressing rooms were literally the, the size of a toilet. You and know? their manager smoked a pipe as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, that it, it's coming this, Well, it? I, I, yeah, yeah. I spoke at a dinner at Sutton United about three months ago, and you, you? you'd be pleased to know there's lots of pictures of that game. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine as, as, as you yeah. walk, As you walk yeah. into the boardroom and into the, you know, yeah. into the tunnels and everything. I mean, oh, they live, know, they live they on that course, forever. They should be proud of it. I mean, and, and really, the, the, not many teams caught us cold to con. We were a very difficult side to beat in them days. Yeah. But uh, Sutton did. Sutton caught us cold that day. They just came at us like, you know, the, it was like off the starting blocks, really. And they caught us cold. I've got to. I've got to be honest. And we we conceded goals that we never used to. We had a really solid back four and a top class goalkeeper in Steve Grozovic, but there were sloppy goals. You know the goals that we shouldn't really have conceded. And when we got back to one one, I remember we thought, well, you know, we'll we'll run away with this. And again, they came charging back at us again. And it was it was just like you said, Dave. It was all set up. I think really yeah. in football, one thing I learned over twenty years, you've just got to accept it, it's fate. And uh, what's meant to be uh, happens really, and I think that was Sutton's day. And the, you know they did thoroughly deserve it. Same as when we won that cup that year, we did it the hard way, and it was you know we thoroughly deserved to win it. You know. Yeah. What yeah. are you up to now then? I, I do all kinds, right? I mean, I, obviously, I walked away from the, the Hartlepool job ten years, getting on for be about ten years ago, and I was 36, and I'd had 20 years, so I really had had enough. Uh, of uh, football is something I'd, I'd only done since I was 12 years old, so I wanted something different. And I do bits and pieces, really. I work for the Press Association, so I get around to different grounds and see plenty of football through a season. And, um, you know, I coach kids. I run a development centre for Middlesbrough, for the academy up here. I'm, I'm between Thursk and Boroughbridge, York, that kind of area, uh, which I really enjoy doing, coaching the kids. And um, I have a contract with Teesside University, strange enough, being a Borough lad. And I, re- I, um, I let accommodation to the students uh, in Middlesbrough, uh, the manor I was from, really, the Newport Crescent Road area is where I was brought up. And uh, just tick along, really, to be honest. I mean, just have a nice, um, steady lifestyle without the... I mean, I got that much... I got really stressed, actually. Towards the end of my career, trying to, trying to manage Hartlepool was a re- really, really difficult thing that I tried to do there. And I think uh, anything, with it, anything hassle-free now, I'll do it. <laughs> Sounds like Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. I mean, Jeff's the same. But having, uh, you know, how long did you referee for, Jeff? I had, a, I had a feed for 25 uh, years from starting. And, yeah, and people, I don't think people realise, Jeff, I mean, the people say, oh, football, what a way to make a living. Fantastic. But there's a hell of a lot of stresses involved uh, in, the prof- in professional football. This is um, what this is what frustrated me, you know, Keith, a couple of seasons ago when people were saying, oh, footballers, they don't know the born, they only play two days of games a week, and they're saying they're tired after a European trip. Yeah. But the travelling, the constant motorways, planes yeah. and boats and trains, yeah. it, and the training, you know, people say, oh, they only train for a couple of hours a day. Oh, no, well, you can't train for eight hours a day. There'd be no yeah. point. The body wouldn't do it. it, do it. And, well, and, and, and it now. is nice. And, and also, you've been, in the recent years, you've, you've co- took another angle as well, that some of us have done and you've gone down the path of being out of book 
I have actually, yes. A tenner and a box of kippers is the title of my book. <laughs> and I'll tell you the title of that before you even ask, because you're bound to say, why did you call it that? And it was, it was, it was the, the author is a guy called Jonathan Strange, who's a lovely man, lives in London. And uh, apparently one of the very first transfers at Hartlepool, just at the turn of the century, went for a tenner and a box of kippers, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, he's done a really good job. He rang me up. I mean, it was two or three year project, obviously, as you can imagine, to say, would I be interested in getting involved? He wanted to write a book about my career because he found it, you know, quite fascinating because, uh, you know, it was so long and there was so many ups and downs and it was amazing how it went from the likes of York to Scunthorpe and then an FA, you know, an FA Cup final win all in the space of a year. Um, so we wrote the book, and um, it came, you know, obviously, it could have been, you could have, I could have told him that much more, and it probably could have been about three foot wide the book. But he's made a really, really good job. He's very articulate, and I think it's a fascinating read. Actually, for me, all this time later, it's a little bit like reading about somebody else, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you see today's game, Manchester United and Chelsea? You know, we, three two seems to have been of late. There's been tons of games ending up three two in in the, in playoffs. the playoffs and one thing and another yeah. towards the end of the season. And, and obviously, you fancy a bet, do you? Do, 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 can you see a five goal <laughs> thriller between Man United and Chelsea today? Uh, actually, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't think I can. I mean, I, I'm a great, I'm a Manchester United a fan in a way. I mean, obviously, I'm just a neutral nowadays, and being a Borough lad, you always like to see Middlesbrough doing well. Um, but I, I just really like when Man U play well. They're a great sight, and I think they have been for the last 10, 15 years. When they really start to play that attacking football, where they're getting down the sides and whipping balls in, and it's it's uh, it's a great style of football that Manchester United play. Uh, whereas Chelsea are more of a grinding out team, aren't they? They're solid and they try not to let so much away and they, and they try and grind it out. And I think it, it will be Chelsea that dictates the way the game's played. And um, I'm not convinced. I think it'll be very tight. Maybe it's 1-1. One, one. And um, you know I can see it going right the way to penalties. No, we don't. We don't want extra time on penalties. I'm yeah. in. I'm out in London tonight, and I want to get out for a few beers. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get down Covent Garden and uh, see if I can get arrested for leaning over um, railings yeah. or whatever. <laughs> well, the anticipation will give you more of a thirst, won't it? Extra time on penalties. Keith, great stuff. Thanks for bringing back all the memories from 20 years ago when I was just a nipper and Jeff was still really old. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite young myself. At the time. That's the worst thing. That's what I missed the most. We've, we've, got, we've got you. We've got you. We've got your date of birth in front yeah. of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All your yeah. stats. I can give you five years, mate, that's then, all. Then with the days. Those were the days.